Hi everybody. Um, again, my name is Ian Sedgwick from Arcan Global. So I'm going to walk you through a life cycle maintenance optimization presentation today. It's very much about the, the process and the, the philosophy, the methodology. Um, I'll mention some of our the product side of, of what we offer as a company towards the end, and uh, we can follow up that. Um, after the after the web webinar, if you have any inquiries. All right. So just taking a step back and looking at asset management. Asset management is about delivering a sustained level of asset performance to meet corporate goals. As we all know, we've got to balance cost, risk, the standard that we're trying to achieve over the asset entire life. It's a delicate balancing act that we all are facing every day when managing our fleets, but we don't often have a clear understanding of what is acceptable, what is our target, what are the goals. You know, what is the productivity goal? What what are the budget goals? What's acceptable risk? What are our standards? We all sort of understand that we need to achieve high productivity at low cost, but what are the boundaries? How, how do we know if we're on track? How do we determine if the decisions we make are actually aligned to those goals. Um, to, give, to give you a story of what I'm talking about, there was an OEM who we worked with um, who had a maintenance contract on a truck fleet and there was an availability penalty or bonus um, of around $60 an hour and it quickly got known on site as a dollar per minute and it was very effective in focusing the organisation on downtime and understanding that it was costing money. So if a mechanic took an extra 15 minutes to respond to a breakdown, then everyone knew that it cost the dealer $15. The same principle applies to our minds. There's a cost of downtime that needs to be understood when making decisions. But I think very few operations really have quantified what that goal is and how it how it needs to shape how we approach maintenance, reliability, um, when to sell and dispose of assets, everything that we do, what is the actual goal? Um, it helps us optimise and put into context how we need to optimise our maintenance strategies, what we consider critical, uh, how we action, asset health feedback and trends and alerts what decisions we make day to day, what we stand down, what we continue to work on for opportunity maintenance, etc. Um, so it is quite important. It is something for us all to think about when we go back on to site as to what are these goals, what are the parameters, because it creates a framework for our decision making. But quite often what we do also see when we go onto the site is we see are very much a focus around the reliability or the engineering side of managing the equipment on site. Um, and it's, it's, not, it's not surprising, you know, a lot of sites when they're sort of advancing their maintenance maturity, they're focusing on, you know, doing a quality job in the workshop, getting their PMs on schedule and executed efficiently. We've got some form of condition monitoring in place. Uh, we've got a strong safety culture. We've got procedures. You know, I've just come from a site, a very remote site on the other end of the world where they're really just trying to get on top of these basics. And it's, it, it focuses everyone on what we're trying to do day to day and trying to deliver greater availability and reliability um, because of a lot of pressure from operations. But it's not necessarily in the context of, well, the decisions we're making, are they actually delivering on that goal and what our asset management strategy uh, is, a, is for each of the assets, not just availability and reliability. Um, you know, we're seeing more and more sites getting into more of the advanced technologies and methodologies around, around reliability. Um, and of course, OEMs as well are going full throttle into connecting up all their assets and downloading all the good information off the machines and trying to interpret it. But a lot of it, again, has been put into, into a short-term sort of context. How's the component today, for example, and what do we need to, what in, what's the intervention we do need to do tomorrow? 
but it's not necessarily, well, is that the right intervention and what's the overall impact on the asset through its life? And that's where we start to, we start to want to broaden our minds and start to looking at understanding the life cycle implications of the decisions that we're making. You know, when we're making these decisions that are our components, does it, should, should we actually just keep the component running and rather sell the asset? You know, so we start to look at the financial implications and the investment decision making around the asset, not just how we keep it, how we keep it operating day to day. So we really want to start thinking about the, the implications around buying and selling assets, what's the implication of the budget, does the engineering maintenance strategy align to the assets life cycle strategy? For many sites, they are struggling to bring these two concepts together and understand the impact of, the, of these decisions on the long-term achievement of our asset management goals. And it's certainly not a case of following one methodology or the other. It very much needs to be taken hand in hand. And those on site start to appreciate and see the financial and longer term implications of managing their equipment. You know, so just, just some simple examples. You know, if the site's looking at, do we, should we do two PMs at 250 or 330 hours? What's the impact on availability? What's the extra cost in our budget if we're going to do that? Um, what are the, if we're looking at different failure modes and risk profiles, and we're understanding that you know, th there can be different failure modes, there's a probability of that happening. Are we factoring that into our the life cycle cost of those assets? Is it being factored into the budget? Um, or is it just can being isolated into the decision of actually just will the iron last or won't it last? And what can we do to optimize the iron's life? Well, actually, even if we push it out an extra 3,000 hours over the life cycle, are we making a material difference as to how many components we're going to change out or when we're going to sell the assets? You know, do we looking at rebuild versus remanufactured components? Again, a very important uh, strategy assessment that we need to do. Um, but there are other implications besides just getting that extra life potentially and reliability out of the component. What's the impact on the maintenance budget? What's the impact on having, if we've got stock already sitting in inventory, are we just going to dispose of all of that and, and just cut over to this new strategy? Do we actually know how to rebuild components if we're going to do it themselves? There are a lot more implications than just getting that extra life out of the component. So, the point being essentially that we can't make these decisions in isolation. We can't just look at the reliability side or the life cycle side. We need to be looking at both. If we don't, we're not achieving the goal of how we wish to utilize these assets and the productive life we want to get out of these assets and the performance. And we're also disconnecting ourselves from what maintenance, finance, inventory and HR are relying on us for to to synchronise what we're, what our strategy is with the asset and all the supporting parts and people that we need, the impact on finance, the budget and what we need to hold and what our working capital expectations are and on operations. You know, are we achieving the productivity that they want and are we incorporating the influences of the change in mind plan? It's not one without the other, it's very much both. Now, sites have, have struggled to actually bring these two together because they, because they haven't had a methodology or a tool to be able to, be able to do that. Um, so what we're able to do then is focus and pr on dynamic life cycle costing. Dynamic life cycle costing provides a real-time forecast of all maintenance events for equipment to the end of its life. So we're getting a real-time view of what's going on with the asset, the influencing factors around utilisation, productivity, work orders change out, 
uh, sorry, work order component changeouts, asset health, feedback. And all of those sort of data inputs coming into and influencing what we're projecting as the dynamic life cycle or as the life cycle cost for that equipment. And understanding that, we can now start to make more educated decisions in the context of what we're trying to deliver, which isn't just availability and reliability. It's also, like I said, meeting those higher corporate goals. And so this is a differentiator and a capability that allows the reliability, reliability group to understand the broader implications when they're doing, when they're building different scenarios to actually determine and assess what is the ultimate balance and what are the outputs that need to go to finance and inventory and these other processes to align the organisation. So what we're doing then, as I said, is we're integrating all the fundamentals around maintenance management, around assets and utilisation statistics, the maintenance strategy, all of our good reliability processes, our planning and scheduling execution, all of those fundamentals, bringing that in, projecting the life cycle cost of this equipment so we can see what are our risks that we need to manage. We can understand our resources that we, we require if we're going to change the maintenance strategy. We can benchmark equipment against each other. We can optimise the strategy to meet both our financial goals, our availability, productivity, reliability goals. We can understand when the optimal time is to uh, dispose of assets, purchase new assets, and we can generate a budget that we can deliver to finance that we're all comfortable that we're all comfortable with. So we're bringing we're bringing everything together into a dynamic forecast, which is very much taking our asset management to the next level. So at RPM Global, what we're doing, so we intrinsically understand the importance of, inter of, of having this integrated solution, of integrating the life cycle cost in this reliability, of integrating maintenance with the rest of the stakeholders in the value chain, in mind planning and understanding that's influence on how we need to manage the assets and how we need to optimise our maintenance strategy. Understanding that how we do develop our maintenance strategy generates and supplies a budget to finance because this is what we need to do, how often we need to do it, what resources we need, how much it costs. And that very much we can all measure ourselves against, the, and I should have said availability as well, so that we can, as a whole, measure ourselves against that budget and therefore against, like I was coming back to, those goals. We also, with our products, so our products being sort of on that lower, that lower level, um, we also integrate that with other systems in the mining in the mining ecosystem. We interface to the ERPs like SAP, like Ellipse. We integrate to control systems, dispatch systems, health systems. Again, pulling in all of this data so we can so we can make an educated decision around our maintenance strategy to optimise the lives of our components to ensure we achieve our goals. This integration is achieved through the ISA standard. So ISA 95, we're on the board of that group. Um, also is Caterpillar and BHP in Schneider to name a few, where we've defined the industry standards for how we integrate to all these various systems to make it seamless, to make it real time, and to deliver information rather than just data. Looking into the future, 
as more and more technologies emerge and find their place in the mining landscape, you know, we've talked about AI and drones and automation, Google Glasses, all these sort of things, we feel we're in a unique position with their integration and our standards to take advantage of these technologies as they come online and like we have over the last uh, 17 or so years with our maintenance AMT solution. Uh, that's about time, so thank you very much. If there's more you would like to understand about AMT, our asset management solution, or our other software, the integration, please feel free to uh, contact us. Thanks, Sheldon. Thanks, Sheldon. Thanks for that, Ian. An excellent presentation there, and um, a, a great key point, uh, bringing it all together at the end um, about integrating maintenance with the other departments um, and with other softwares and systems uh, within the organisation. So uh, thanks very much for that.